<laughs> All right. We're talking about the coolant tower. What is the purpose of the coolant tower? Somebody? Cool the water. Cool the water, yes. Uh, All right. Coolant tower has a level. How do we? That level is con the water in the coolant tower is constantly being evaporated by the fans. I guess I should draw some fans. Uh, Eighteen and so. So. You can see the steam evaporating off of it. And the way it works, my best understanding, is that the hotter molecules of water tend to go away with the fans, and that leaves the colder ones, so it pulls the temperature down that way. You see the steam coming out the top, therefore you know that that level is going to be dropping, so we got to put water back in to make up that level. Where's that water coming from? Clarifiers. So we got river water, and we got clarifiers. And then we got the 131 valve. How much water are we talking about? In the ballpark, 5,000 gallons a minute. So five to seven thousand gallons per minute at full load. On a summer day, it's going to be pushing the seven, eight kind of number. All right. What levels matter? Two hundred six, two hundred six, two twenty-five. Two twenty-five is like the flood. 206 is like the lowest level. All right, so <coughs> around 200. See how it's got this slope shape to it, right? Like a swimming pool with the deep end. So at around 200, you've drained all the shallow end, and now every inch has a lot less gallons in it. So around 200 inches is where it's like, we got to do something. The rules just changed, right? Uh, 220 ish is what's normally put into the controller at the clarifier. And I want to say more like 235 ish is the, the top where it overflows. How do we measure the level? Level transfer. Level transfer. Any idea how that works? Phaser beam. Pressure. Pressure. So there are three of them, and they are pressure transmitters that have a stick that goes way the hell down to the bottom. And they're reading the pressure, and they, you know, how the more level you got above the transmitter, the more pressure it feels. Uh, there's three of those. Why I do some things out here have three transmitters? They take, just in case one of them go wrong, and then they take the, they uh, look at both of them. And they say, well, if this one is closer to this one, this one is closer to this one, and this one is way off, then we're going to go by something that's in the middle of these two. Okay, so uh, they call it median select. So if you've got three readings, it picks the middle one. It says, oh, it must be this one. And so if one of them goes screwy and ends up way down here, it goes, well, I'm still gonna pick the middle one. Uh, and this is, you find this three transmitters on things that trip the entire plant. And it takes two out of three of them to uh, agreeing to trip the plant. So these level transmitters, 
don't directly trip the plant, but they trip the surf water pumps, trip both surf water pumps, trips the plant. I want to say that's something like a 176 is the pump trip. As always, my drawings are not to scale. All right. So we've got this giant 12 foot pipe. And what are we cooling with it? Condenser. The condenser. Give me a second. Catch up on the drawing. One header for each. All right, so it goes into the condenser. It goes, uh, got two big pipes coming out, two big valves in the switch yard there. It goes to a water box. It goes through 10,000 tiny little tubes and goes to another water box. And then it sweeps around the other side, does the same thing going out. All these little tubes, what are they cooling? Somebody other than Jack. Steam. Steam from? Turbine. Turbine exhaust. Yes. So, steam's red, right? I'm like, egg white. <laughs> <laughs> so that steam, get, uh, steam goes across the tubes, the tubes, tubes cool down the steam. The steam collapses in the water, which takes up way less space. That water goes to the hot well, makes another lap through the steam cycle. That collapsing action is most of what causes our vacuum. So in the condenser, your atmosphere is almost entirely steam, and that steam is collapsing, and that is what makes it less pressure than outside, or less pressure than the 120 pounds going into it. It's probably not that much. I think 120 pounds is going into the LP condenser. Let's not get in the weeds here. <laughs> All right. So temperatures. We are somewhere around 85 going in and somewhere around 115 coming out. Back when I was control room operator, I would give this class, those numbers would be like dead nuts on. But it's been a long time. All right. So there's two condensers, two physical body separate condensers. And then there's two loops of uh, surf water. There's an inner loop and an outer loop, each of which goes through both condensers. Why? Why bother this two loop business? Efficiency? Negative. What's the other good guess? Because you got a whole in one, you can isolate it. It's too good one already. All right, so the two common answers here are efficiency and reliability. If efficiency is wrong, reliability is right. So 
if you get a hole in one of these tubes and it starts, because the steam cycle water is demon high quality water. We don't want to, we don't want to screw up the turbine. We don't want to screw up the, the boiler walls. And this water in the surf water basin isn't even as good as surface water. It's straight out of the freaking clarifier, right? We got the mud out of it, and that, that's all we did. So if one of these tubes springs a leak, then that dumps, and then we get there's conductivity probes. on all the corners of the condenser body. They're about seven feet up at all the corners on the ground floor. So that conductivity probe will probably tell you where the leak is. It gives you a good guess anyway, because and then that will let you know whether you need to isolate the out, outer loop or the inner loop and you can drain it, and conceivably, with the other side still running, and with steam still rubbing in, the whole system still running, you could go in there and then find the leaking tube, which you would find through vacuum, right? You know, one, you, you'd smoke it, and then one section's gonna have a and Then you plug that tube on both ends, and then put everything back in service. We have never done that. We have had a tube leak, and they said, nah, that's too risky. So the intent of whoever designed this plant was not carried out. All right, so that is the biggest, most significant load on the surf water system. What else does it do? What else does it cool? ECB. ECB. Where you stop, start? Nah, we got more to talk about here. On the fans, how many fans you're running affects vacuum, doesn't it? This inlet temperature affects vacuum. The number of fans you're running affects this inlet temperature. So yes, yes is the answer to your question. But I can't just be straight answer kind now, can I? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the faster you drop the temperature. Right, so the, the lower this temperature, then the harder it collapses the steam and the better vacuum you get. And uh, our ideal vacuum is 1.2 PSA absolute. 0.2 PSIA, which is minus 12.5 PSI G. And absolute vacuum is like what, 14.7? Negative 14.7 is absolute. So you add that 1.2 to that 12.5 and you get your add. See what we did there? You're all over it. All right. So here's the thing. Because of the way this loop is set up, the temperature in between the two loops is like 105, right? Something in that ballpark. And so you end up with what we call an LP condenser, low pressure, and an HP condenser, which is going to run just a little bit higher, like a 1.4. And that's under ideal circumstances where everything freaking works. Uh, right now we have an air leak on the LP side, which means it's actually running 0.2 higher than the HP side. All right, the other things that it cools, one of those things is ECB, which stands for Equipment Cooling B. I don't know what Equipment Cooling A is, though. I forgot how to draw a heat exchanger for a second. One more thing that's cooled by surf water. Vacuum pumps. Vacuum pumps. Let's see, so, so 
somewhere up here, comes off, and we got a little duplex strainer. They're cool by ECB too, eh? Negative. It's two of them, it's two vacuum pump strainers. There are two vacuum pump strainers. They are near the ECB coolers, but they are separate loops. It is surf water that is going through those. And that is because the ECB set point is 100 degrees, and those vacuum pumps, 100 degrees is too hot. So if surf water is colder than 100, if it wasn't, then we'd never be able to get ECB down to 100, right? talked uh, earlier about turning on and off these fans to control vacuum. Uh, that is the main reason you're turning on and off fans, especially at full load. But at low loads, you get in a situation where it's actually keeping, being able to cool the ECB coolers. That becomes a controlling factor. Somewhere around 300 megawatts, you can turn off fans watching this vacuum and end up at 105 degrees on your ECB coolers. All right. We've got blow down valve. And that's going to the to the wastewater pond. It has an automatic feature. Does anybody know what that does in auto? Keeps the cooling tower level now? No. Uh, it could conceivably be used that way if somehow you lost control of your clarifier and had too much water going in there and nothing else you could do with it. Then maybe you could put this in manual, but at most it just gets rid of a thousand gallons a minute. So it sure as hell won't do all of it, but it can help. And it is something to remember. If you lose makeup water, the earlier you remember to shut this blowdown valve, then the longer you're going to last. So that's a plus. Got nothing. That is correct. Caught the other water. So there it is. I think it's on the outside one of these water boxes has like a sample I think it's in between these guys so in between them there's little instrumentation panels and you get a pressure transmitter and a temperature element on both sides and on one of them I think it's the HP side you also have something going through a little sample where it measures pH and conductivity. So this conductivity tells this valve what to do, and there's a set point of like 3,000. This is a number that changes depending on what the chemists and chemtreat want. Some of this conductivity is just because we're not putting great water in there. I mean, clarifiers are not drinking water quality. And some of it comes from chemicals that we add. What chemicals do we add? Uh, hypo. Hypo. Oh, what's the purpose of hypochloride? Help it settle down. Like drop to the bottom. Negative. Kill the algae, kill the bugs. Uh, in the clarifiers, coagulant and polymer are used to settle out stuff. We don't really want stuff settling out in the uh, home tower because it will be a problem for our pumps eventually. All right, so hypochlorite kills the growies. Uh, every outage we go and we Every year, every annual outage, we go and we take a sample of the fill on the cool tower.
So they go and they cut out a place, a thing, section of it, and they send it to be weighed. And there's a certain amount of weight that it should have if it was just, if it was right. And there's a certain amount that's getting plugged up by mud and algae and gunk. <coughs> and then, so yeah, algae causing that to, to build up and act like a filter instead of just a heat exchanger is bad. But it's like, like four foot thick of plastic fill that has a whole little bunch of torturous little path so that the air gets pulled across it as much as possible while it's going down. So the water, this water goes up, it goes to sprinkler heads, it goes on top of a bunch of plastic, and you got air getting pulled up from a fan across the plastic. And then as it goes through the plastic, that's a chance for the, the heat exchange to happen and for the hotter molecules to get blown away and evaporate. All right. More chemicals. What else? Atmospheric acid. Sulfuric acid. What's the purpose of sulfuric acid? Which way does it go? Uh, down. Correct. Lowers pH. Uh, that acid also has a line coming off of. This is not a PNID. You got a circ water line that dilutes it. Also got a sample line in that chemical building there. All right. Chemicals. What else do we use? Scale inhibitor. Scale inhibitor. Scale inhibitor is magic, but what that magic does is it keeps things from settling on the inside of these pipes. Because these pipes are hot on the outside and it makes stuff want to play it out on them. And scale inhibitor keeps that from happening. Magic. <laughs> One more thing. So how they put their foam inhibitor in there. Foam Even inhibitor. Careful, that is, and then you know they get on check it before they just pour it in there, I guess. You put some in there sometimes. So is that like a tote and an air pump or something? You're either that or a gallon bucket. I don't know exactly what that you use, but okay. You put some in there. Oh, it's in there. It's not what I was looking for, though. Polymer? No. We already covered the coagulant polymer are not in this system. Sulfate. Sulfate. Um, by sodium sulfate, is that right? Okay. And, and I'm sure it's sodium by sulfate. Okay, okay, almost. Sodium by sulfite. We got there. Teamwork. What does sodium by sulfite do? So you're not really putting that in the cooling tower. Ah, that is true. You are putting that in the blowdown water. Oh, it raises the pH. Nope. I mean, well, it, it get rid of the hypo. That is the right, correct answer. So, hypo kills bugs. This wastewater pond is going out to the river, and we are not allowed to kill the fish in the river. So we have to, uh, bisulfite bonds with hypochlorite and makes it safe. Good answer. All right. 